Having said that, Mr. President, recognize. Thank you very much, Commissioner Sanchez. Um, I want to respectfully um, make, a, make a few points, but, but first of all, um, let me start by saying that you did not do something wrong, and you did not do something shameful. You did something imperfect. There are those in life that make decisions and build, and there are those in life that sit back and play Monday morning quarterback. We will continue to make mistakes because we make decisions and we build. And there's not a perfect world. What the city and we did is at the time where you could not buy anything in downtown Miami for less than $500,000 a condominium, came up with a program that allowed people to buy units at $100,000 a unit, giving almost the same amenities as the other condominium projects in Miami. That was the right thing to do. The commission did the right thing. The county did the right thing and related did the right thing. We have built thousands, thousands, tens of thousands of units in South Florida. We have won every award for affordable housing in the country. We are by far the largest builders of affordable housing in Miami and Dade County. Not only have we won awards for our projects, but this coming month, the Smithsonian and the National Museum of Building is giving us their greatest award for related as the best national developer of affordable housing. We are good at what we do. We do not just do it for profit. We do it because we have a social purpose. As I said in that letter, we make a lot less money in doing these projects than we make in, a, in regular condominiums. It takes a lot more time to do it than in regular condominiums. We don't have to deal with county government, with city government, with all the regulations to make a lot less than what we do. Similarly, when we took the Alapata station and are the only and first ones to do affordable housing in transit stations at a minimal profit, when all the other projects have not been built, it was related that was the first and it was related that was the right one. And we did it with the county and with the city. And for thousands and thousands of units, we have never been criticized. We have received awards. So politicizing something that is good is wrong. Because you know, Mrs. Mendez said in the Miami Herald editorial, which you alluded to, we could have taken this money and built 20 habitat units. Well, you know what? We built 200, not 20 units. And today, people that bought, whether they rented the units or not, have produced a lot more than 20 units for affordable housings, not in the habitat neighborhoods, but right in downtown Miami where people need to work. It was the right decision. And Ms. Mendez was absolutely wrong in her statement and unknowledgeable of what we do. She sits back and she writes on something that she's not knowledgeable of. Since 1979, when we did the first 500 units in Little Havana for the elderly, starting the housing program, which by the way, I wrote while I was a planner in the city of Miami in 1976, we have continued to perform correctly in building affordable housing. In this particular job, the mistake was very clear. In our seal to move rapidly and allow people to live downtown of affordable means, what we did was that we forgot to put time restrictions and resale restrictions on those units. But so you to know that before we opened those units to the general public, and Mr. Regalado was there, and Mr. Sanchez were there, claiming what a great project that it was, and it is. We opened it only to city employees, to county employees, to Dade community teachers, and to Miami-Dade teachers. So what we tried to do was go for those people, their, oh, and the hospitals. So we want to we'll go for the nurses, and for the lab technicians, and for the firemen, and for the policemen. So we did that. We did that not only extensively by email blast, but having parties in their locations 
only open to them and not even open to outside brokers so there would be no profiteering, no general public coming in. We sold out of those parties 65% of the job. And only after we exhausted those did we open it to the general public. So we did, we did make an effort, a big effort, to give it only to those people that were the target market. What worries me about this is that affordable housing is a very difficult thing to accomplish. As you see all around you, there isn't any affordable housing being built near urban centers, almost none. Why? Because it's difficult. Because it's very, very difficult and not very profitable. Building condominiums is much more profitable and a lot less of a hassle. So please, I beg you, forgetting about the related companies, let's all learn from the mistakes. Let's do put some time limits. Let's do put some restraints. Let's try to avoid profiteering. Don't make it to the extent that do you don't allow an affordable housing individual to live in his units and afterwards make $80,000. That's the American way. Whether you're rich or you're poor, you should be allowed at some point to sell those units and make money. Building equity in homes and profitability is the way people have moved up in America. Do not, you do not castigate this program. Let's learn from it and let's move forward with restraints so more affordable housing can be built. And let's all do it better in the future. Thank you very much. Mr. Right, Chairman. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Sorry, you recognize Mr. Perez, just so it's clear, it is not issue that anyone here takes with the 65% of the people that were offered this property. The issue that people take issue here with are the Venezuelan corporations that purchased this property that turned around and sold it. The New York corporations that purchased this property that turned around and sold it. Now, whether it's profitable to you or not to do this, related to 2005 revenues were $3.25 billion. If we're going to have affordable housing in Miami, and you're going to have meaningful affordable housing, it must come with restrictions, because why would we vote the citizens' taxpayers' money to subsidize a project that does not have these restrictions? It makes absolutely no sense. All right.